Freitäcker. Good afternoon to you all and many thanks for joining us here at the third keynote of IFA 2018. I hope that you have already had an opportunity to explore IFA and if you did, you will have noticed something. It's packed, it's packed with computers. Every single hall is packed with computers. And I don't just mean the desktop or laptop kind, of course, although there are plenty of those. Remember, about five years ago when some people said PCs are dead, how wrong can you get it? No, what I'm talking about is a different kind of computer. If you look closely, at least half of the devices that show here the bowling are computers in their own way. You may call them washing machine or air conditioning unit or house door or a smartphone or dome, but ultimately they are all computers or at least part of a digital ecosystem. By the way, if you stay in Berlin until Tuesday or Wednesday, come to our new convention, Shift Automotive. You will join industry leaders from automotive and consumer electronics who will discuss the future of what is arguably the largest and the fastest computer on earth. This computer also comes equipped with four wheels. It's your car. But there is my point. Computing has been totally transformed. It's not just because hardware and software have come up in leaps and bounds. It's because today's computers are connected and augmented to cloud computing and artificial intelligence. It's technology disruption in the most positive sense of the word. Do you remember the promise? A computer on every desk? How visionary, but also how great. Because today's homes and offices are each powered not by one, but probably a dozen computers or more. However, most of us don't even realize that all this computing power is at our disposal. The prediction that I just quoted was obviously made by Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, a company that has now shaped all our lives for more than 40 years. However, it's a company that has not just been a technology disruptor, it also has constantly and consistently disrupted itself and reinvented itself so that I can keep so that I, it can keep disrupting and improving our world. Today, Microsoft is a giant in cloud computing, provides the productivity tool of choice for every computing platform imagining, is one of the hottest hardware brands on earth, and keeps rethinking and reinventing the computer experience again and again. If you were here for our first keynote of the day, you heard me talk about the power of co-innovation. Technology disruption brings ever more complexity and that's why no company can invent everything all by itself anymore. To succeed, companies have to partner and join forces as they innovate. Nowhere it's more, is this more true and more tangible than in the Microsoft ecosystem. That's why I'm really pleased to see Microsoft join us for another IFA keynote this year. I welcome back on stage. Nick Parker, Microsoft's Corporate Vice President for Consumer and Device Sales, who will show us plenty of co-innovation as he shares Microsoft's vision for new computing possibilities. Many thanks and over to Nick. Thank you. Welcome to New Possibilities, a future we are dreaming of together. Made possible by you. Hey Cortana, turn off hallway lights. Okay. Connected devices become smarter and augment human ingenuity. With the intelligent cloud amplified by the intelligent edge. Devices that help us collaborate seamlessly, 
across the entire digital fabric of our lives. Intelligent Edge devices that communicate with the cloud and each other in real time. What does all this mean in human terms? It means lives are changed, touched, saved, enriched. New experiences are invented. Bridges are built. Future scientists are born. And innovators around the world are connected. Together, we are empowering people to achieve more. And today is the culmination of everything we've built up to this point. Tomorrow, it's going to be even better. And the same for the day after that. Because together, we are building the future. Please welcome Corporate Vice President, Consumer and Device Sales, Microsoft, Nick Parker. Good afternoon and welcome. It's great to be back here in Berlin with this fabulous audience of customers and partners. But I'd like to start by saying thank you. Thank you for an incredible year of partnership and customer success. We had a great year together. And just look at some of the stats that we have here. 700 million monthly active devices, approximately running on Windows 10. And of those 200 million of them, Windows 10 commercial devices, growing at 79% year on year. That is just such huge success, an opportunity for our customers and our partners alike. On top of that, Enterprise Mobility Suite users, growing at 55% year on year, and 165 million Office 365 users. These are tremendous growth figures that show the success and the innovation that together with our partners, we were able to achieve. On top of that, we had growth in our Windows Server business that refreshed this year, and of course, underpinning it all, that phenomenal storied growth of Azure at 89% year on year. This is a testament to the partnerships and the business we have today. Now, if we take the short-term approach of how we see growth, let's just look at the IDC numbers for the coming year. And we see that double-digit growth in those core PC categories that Windows and our customer partnerships will continue to innovate and push hard. In consumer, on the back heels of the phenomenal Gamescom experience, We'll see that double-digit growth in premium and gaming, and of course, the ultra-slim in two-in-one. And as we see the migration of Windows 7 to Windows 10 in commercial, that's such a phenomenal growth rate, we'll see that commercial PC business continue to grow in those double digits. And that is the immediate business ahead of us. And of course, expecting that same interstellar performance from our Azure solutions and partnerships. But if I step back and look past the next year and actually look out three years, we look at this opportunity by the number of devices connected, by the amount of data that's being used, and how those devices and those cloud capabilities come together to bring new experiences and new capabilities to our world. Gartner believes that by 2021, there's going to be over 25 billion smart connected devices. That's devices that can compute and are connected to the internet. The amount of data that we'll all personally consume will continue to grow as our devices, whether it's our phones, whether it's devices in our homes or our PCs, do more and give us more capability and free up our time and make us more productive. And of course, all the devices in our lives are getting more connected and more capable as they become infused and disappear into the background of our everyday life. At Microsoft, we start with our mission, which is to empower every person and organization 
on the planet to achieve more. And it's in the context of that opportunity and that mission that defines two things that we're going to do, which is what is our responsibilities in this industry to the world of this changing capability and this changing technology landscape, and then what is the technologies that we are going to provide our customers and our partners to build and deliver that world together. But it starts with our core responsibility as a company in this industry. And it starts with our view that privacy is a fundamental human right. And this means that the data that we collect needs to be for the value of the user or the end user who created that data. We believe that that data, we have principles applied to all that we do, should be fully visible to the user and the user has full control of that data. And we put these principles and we will continue to strive to drive this as one of the core founding principles of our responsibility in the industry. The second, of course, is on cyber security. And this is how we work diligently across the industry with partners to ensure the industry and the tech industry is a safe place to build and learn and grow our digital future. And finally, we believe that AI is something that can empower and completely transform our world for good. And this is where we want to work with regulations and partners in the industry to ensure that it's used only for good. And that we ask not what computers can do, but what computers should do. And this is the core of our responsibility that we take incredibly seriously as we build this future. And it's that responsibility and that mission that defines what we're going to build in our technology. And we start with how we see the world. And we see the world as this intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. The intelligent cloud is all of those capabilities of cloud computing continuously enabled and transferred across this incredible compute fabric down to the edge where compute is being distributed across all of the devices in our lives. Our cars, our thermostats, our home appliances, our mobile devices. It's that distributed computing environment connected to those incredible cloud scenarios that gives us this intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge. In my house, my daughter's intelligent edge is her Hello Kitty PC. Her, her intelligent cloud is her being able to get online with her school friends and see their schoolwork, and for me and my wife as parents to be able to look at their work. My other daughter's intelligent edge is her Xbox One X, where she will play Minecraft, she'll play Minecraft Realms, online play, she'll be able to track her gamer scores and her friends' gamer scores, and of course, also be able to stream with Mixer her gameplay to her friends, or watch how other people complete levels or build worlds. My wife is a doctor, her intelligent edge is her PC. She will sit in the hospital and take patient notes connected to a secure enterprise digital record system. She'll come home on that same PC and will sit there and look at the kids homework or order something <laughs> online. My intelligent edge is multiple devices from multiple partners that I work with. And all my capability is in the cloud. My family calendar, my home irrigation system, my home thermostat system, that all lives in the cloud and I access that through applications. I access that to secure sites. I access my most confidential Microsoft data on any device, whether it's a kiosk in an airport, whether it's my iPhone, my Galaxy, or my core Windows PC that I get stuff done. That is my intelligent edge and my intelligent cloud. Now in that world of the intelligent edge and the intelligent cloud, we are delivering three foundational technologies. The first is people-centered experiences. These are the applications, the experiences that we build with our partners that have me at the center. It's my calendar that I want to be able to get access to on my phone or from my refrigerator door or when I dial up or through my voice. It's about me at the center of that experience. It's AI infused into everything we do. 
enabling me to get stuff done quicker, recognize patterns and practices that make things easier for me. And finally, it's ubiquitous computing. This is the technology foundation that enables that distributed computing environment from that sensor that detects the heat in the room through my phone, through my PC, through my server, through the cloud Azure capability. It's that end-to-end -end computing fabric that will enable this whole intelligent edge. So I'm going to dive a little deeper on some of those, and I'm going to start with people-centered experiences. Gaming is about cross-platform gameplay that we enable people to have. Play that game on a PC, play that game on an Xbox, or play cross-platform. On Microsoft 365, it puts you at the center. Where is your work? Where are your home files? Where are your work files? Where is my calendar? How do I get access to it on any device? I buy a new device or I lose a device. How does it bring all that data back in seconds rather than hours or rather than multiple phone calls? That's people-centered experiences across the devices that have multiple senses, whether they're voice, whether they're vision, whether they're tablets, or whether it's the multi-sense, those capabilities that are being infused into all the devices. And of course, making sure that it works seamlessly across work and life. The second of these foundational pillars is AI. And AI isn't a nice to have, it's a must have. And in the next few years, you'll see 80% of all businesses use AI. Now our point of view on AI is that we will provide the building blocks of AI to enable you to build your AI, to enable customers and partners to build their AI. Not have just a couple of large companies just serve you their AI, but actually give people the building blocks to build their own and improve their own AI. We will provide that in a platform. We'll provide industry-capable tools. We will provide an almost limitless compute capability with Azure from end to end. Infinite computing power for that AI capability. As well as intelligent applications, already today you're probably using the AI and Microsoft product, whether you're using PowerPoint Designer that's helping you find great templates that work with the colors and the objects that you're putting on your slides. Or maybe you did a Bing search and it's picking up some of your preferences and other searches you've done to give you a better search each time. And of course, AI solutions. These are pre-built templates or solutions that enable you to get your AI results fast. And the final of these three foundational pillars that we're providing to our partners and customers is ubiquitous computing pillar. This is that end-to-end -end operating system, starting with Azure Sphere, which is a processor as well as a service to keep the Internet of Things on the microcontroller class devices secure and up-to-date with the end-to-end -end capability from the very edge. These are small MCU-based sensors all the way to the cloud, to Azure IoT Edge. That's a runtime operating system running Azure that enables devices running Linux or other operating systems to connect directly to the cloud where that data can come from that device to the cloud and return as intelligence. Of course, Windows IoT, that rich computing environment for our embedded systems and appliances, <coughs> full windows that we enjoy hundreds of millions of devices building a year, and of course, Windows Server, and then Azure Stack, that hybrid server that gives that consistency between on-premise and our cloud capability with Azure. That is the ubiquitous computing platform, and those are the products that we provide to enable people to build that edge to cloud connection. So let me just give you a quick tour of a few of the devices that highlight some of this innovation and some of our partner successes. And I'm going to start with this Steel Chainsaw. Steel, the world leader in power tools. They make 10 million power tools a year, approximately. And the device I want to show you here is this connector. And this is the Steel Smart Connector. And that device produces all of the telemetry from inside this tool. And it goes through a hub to the cloud where you get an application on your phone, the Steel Connector app, and that will tell you what's going on, how many hours you've been used it, battery life, temperature, when you need to change um, some of the consumables. Now, also in the commercial environment, this also enables you to check the tools, schedule maintenance, and see their location. So if you're managing a fleet of large power tools or uh, industrial generators and things like that, then this would enable you to be able to do that. And that's a great example where Steel has used Azure, this 
smart connector connected to the cloud has an application as well as a commercial console that enables that solution. The next solution here is from Genetech. And this is a camera combined with software running on Azure that gives retailers incredible data about their traffic in their stores. It looks for traffic flow, it enables you to predict traffic patterns, rearrange the store, and of course it also helps reduce loss or loss prevention in the stores. But it's a good example of a device that connects directly to the cloud and then returns back as a dashboard or business intelligence to decision makers in terms of how they lay the store out or maybe just get retail sales professionals to a part of the store that's getting busy at a point in time. This next device here is called the Cheetah Translator. And uh, this will be launching in Europe in the next month or so. And uh, it will be approximately uh, 59 euro. And this is a translated device that you would take with you wherever you go. You set your to and from language, and you may just sit there with someone with a different language as you and you talk to it. Now this device is running a very, very thin operating system, and on it, it's running Azure IoT Edge. And so that sits on top of that uh, basic operating system, Linux in this case. And then it has Docker containers that have speech recognition and translation. And that comes down from the cloud, and then you sit there and you talk and it will translate in the languages you choose. So just a great example of this intelligent cloud powering the intelligent edge with these incredible scenarios that are really becoming part of everyday life. And that's super useful uh, for translation or for emergency services that need to be able to carry a lot of languages in their pocket for whatever they come across. Now the last device here I'm going to show you is this Lenovo Yoga Book 930. And firstly, this is just a beautiful dual screen device. I don't know if you can see it there. It's got that award-winning classic Lenovo hinge. It's super thin and light. And the best thing about this is it's got a haptic keyboard. So here you see it's a, it's a keyboard. I can type on the keyboard, but it actually gives me feedback in the keys when I type here. And um, you can also change this keyboard, and I'll just show you here, uh, into a drawing screen where you can actually use your stylus and draw. So this is where we're starting to see computers go. It's dual screen. It's a beautiful device. It's fully convertible and, uh, of course, running full Intel Core i5 processor there and running full Windows. So that's, that's it in terms of a, a demo and giving you kind of a top-level overview. And what we've now got for you is Aaron Chappell, who is uh, Corporate Vice President of Engineering for Windows. This is going to go deeper on some of that intelligent edge engineering and innovation from Windows. Thank you very much. Platforms Engineering, Microsoft, Aaron Chappell. Thank you, Nick. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us here with Microsoft and FIFA. I'm really excited to be able to share with you some of, some of the amazing devices and experiences that we have. Uh, as Nick mentioned, we're continually building new, innovative, modern devices to work in concert with the Windows experience create meaningful and impactful experiences across the multi-sense, multi-device world. At Microsoft, as Nick mentioned, our Microsoft is to help people achieve more. Whether we're creating experiences or building devices, we embrace the idea that there isn't just one single solution that addresses all users' needs. We embrace the diversity. We dig in, we examine data, we ask questions, we seek out feedback, and our work reflects what we are hearing and seeing in an ever-shifting landscape of requirements. So with that understanding, let's take a look at a couple of these experiences in action. It's no secret that people want to be connected to the things that are important to them, whether that's pictures, videos, or documents, being able to access those things wherever and whenever is the top priority. In the past, the solution was to store everything locally. Content lived on a single device, and the only way to access it is to open it on that device and find it on a local hard drive. But that's not practical from both a portability and a storage capacity perspective. So in today's cloud, with Office, an Office 365 subscription, I'm able to store a terabyte of data in OneDrive. That's perfect for me to store all of my photos. I can access them from anywhere, including my phone, and I don't have to worry about running out of storage. But how do I ensure that viewing and editing files on my PC is a great experience? 
Even though my device has a tenth of the storage capacity, I'm able to store and browse OneDrive data natively on my Windows 10 device. Windows recognizes that not all pictures are stored locally and fetches pictures from the crowd as I view them. When I go back to a picture that I already viewed, Windows is able to display the picture instantly. Now over time, I eventually use up all the storage capacity on my device, but no need to worry. Windows 10 intelligently identifies files that I haven't used in a while, and it makes space by removing them from my device. But don't worry, all of them are safe in OneDrive, and Windows can fetch them whenever they're needed. In this case, Win OneDrive is my intelligent cloud, and Windows is my intelligent edge. This is just one of the ways Windows 10 augments your device with the power of the cloud to help you achieve more. For me, one of the most prevalent multi-sense, multi-device experiences that is one that I encounter on a daily basis, and that's the interaction with my phone and my PC. I cannot live without either, and yet I often ask myself, why do we seem to live in different worlds? If you think back to our mission, it seems I could be a lot more productive if I, they knew about each other. So let's take a look at that in action. This is Martina's phone. You'll see she gets a text message. While this works well when Martina's looking at her phone, what happens if she's working on her PC? Well, we mirror that exact same text message to her PC. And so Martina doesn't have to switch devices to respond. And in fact, she can use the full power of her keyboard to respond to, respond to that text directly, not stopping her work and switching devices. In the text message conversation she's having with her coworker, Martina wants him to edit a photo that she has based on a color change. And Martina fluidly dragged and dropped those photos from her desktop right into the text conversation and here, right from the text conversation into PowerPoint. Pretty cool. Well, how are we able to do that? We've leveraged the information that Martina has opted to provide us about her and her devices in order to create a trusted connection between her phone and her PC enabling this seamless cross-device interaction. Like text messages, notifications are a central component of how I interact with my phones and keep up to date. Just like with text messages, we've mapped all of Martina's Android notifications to Windows. In this case, she receives um, a notification from her organization, Pintoso. She clicks on that notification and automatically launches the Contoso Expense Report app. She then completes the task by submitting her expense report directly from her PC, again, without having to context switch and touch her phone. This truly is a multi-sense, multi-device experience. This experience I just showed requires an app on your PC and an app on your phone. The app on your phone is called Microsoft Launcher, and it's available today. The app on your PC is coming with the next release of Windows. Speaking of which, for the first time ever, I'm pleased to let you know that our next feature update will be called Windows 10 October 2018 update. The Windows 10 October 2018 update will continue to bring enhancements and features to the nearly 700 million users that are running Windows 10 today. There will be plenty of experiences in addition to the ones that I've shown here today uh, coming in the Windows 10 October 2018 update to delight our customers. And I would encourage all of you to try it out today through our Windows Insider program. Now, all of these experiences come to life on modern devices. But what exactly do we mean when we talk about modern devices? These are devices that have a modern design, they're thin, light, they have modern performance, they have an SSD as opposed to a hard disk drive, and they have modern experiences. They're S-mode enabled, and they have differentiated hardware experiences like Farfield far Voice, Windows Hello, and Windows Inc. These are devices that enable users to be productive in the ways that they want to be, both in the workplace and in their personal world. So, with that, let's see some devices. 
Let me start by showing you a device that is packed full of features while also being incredibly affordable. The Asus VivoBook Flip TP401. Starting at just $329, US dollars, this convertible device displays the best view, whether in tent, laptop, or tablet mode. It has all of the great Windows features you would expect. Touch, Windows Inc., Cortana, and built-in security with Windows Hello. It also features Microsoft Office, so whether it's creativity or productivity, this is a great choice. Another device that caught my eye this week is the Dell Inspiron 13 7000. One of the coolest features of this device, I believe, is that thermal heat actually flows through the hinge, which means there's no heat coming from the bottom of your device. If you're like me and you use your laptop on your lap, this is an amazing feature. It's a gorgeous two-in-one device with an amazing 4K display and performance thanks to the new Intel 8th generation Core <coughs> 2 Series processor, codenamed Whiskey Lake, announced this week here at EFA. Uh, in addition, this device will see improved battery life thanks to modern standby. Up next, uh, we have the modern device that shows that modern devices are also cutting edge machines for gaming, providing powerful and engaging experiences for gamers of all levels. One of the great new gaming rigs that was unveiled this week is the Acer Predator Triton 900. With an innovative easel arrow hinge, it allows the user to control the position of the screen any which way they want, which if you're a gamer, uh, um, combined with Xbox controller support built in, really gives me ultimate flexibility in using this gaming rig. Lastly, it has an incredible 4K gaming display, which makes playing games on this device absolutely beautiful. If I turn back to productivity and the idea of creativity on the go, <coughs> Surface Go is a device that embodies how we see people changing the way they work and play. It's generated tons of excitement since its recent announcement. Not only does it have type covers and accessories that come in multiple colors, but it runs the full office so you can be productive wherever you are. Creativity also doesn't always hit when you're stationary, uh, and so the Surface Go will also come in an LTE-enabled version. And with the Surface Go starting at $399, if you're getting the best personal productivity device at an incredibly competitive price. And so these are all devices, are, all of these devices are fantastic examples of how we are helping users be productive in the ways that are meaningful to them. But there's one area in particular that we see continued growth in terms of enthusiasm and demand, connected computing. Where LTE was once nice to have, more and more users are seeing the benefits of being always connected to the things that are important to them, both at home and at work. All of the investments we're making in connected computing are transforming work and life. We firmly believe that fast, affordable, and ubiquitous cellular connectivity, driven by 4G and 5G, will become core to the way our customers work and live. First, it will transform the boundaries of creativity and teamwork. Currently, PC customers are generally bound to fixed locations wherever they have access to Wi-Fi. We believe that cellular will drive a cultural shift, enabling individuals and teams to be creative and productive across devices wherever they are. And as the shift continues, having connectivity will be expected every time our users turn on their devices. Second, it will simplify the delivery of these experiences. Today, both end users and IT organizations have to maintain their own network. For our commercial customers, this involves capital assets, IT staff,
staff, facilities work, activities that are not core to the company's business. Similar to how we saw our on-site servers move to the cloud, we believe it's inevitable that we'll see a shift to network as a service. 5G technologies in particular will allow our customers to reduce their operating costs and eventually the corporate network will be a thing of the past. Finally, it will improve security. Despite all the investments being made in security at the hardware and software layer, the network is still a major gap that needs to be resolved. Customers are currently trading off security in favor of mobile productivity to be able to work outside of the home and office. Having easy access to fast, reliable cellular networks enables safe connectivity everywhere and bypasses the untrusted public networks. Last year, we launched a portfolio of always connected PCs with our device partners Asus, HP, and Lenovo, as well as our silicon partners, Qualcomm and Intel. Following these devices coming to market, we've received great feedback from users who are seeing connectivity change the way they interact with their PC. Personally, my always connected PC has tra transformed my work. It's thin and light design, means that it easily fits in my purse, and I almost never leave the house without it. In contrast, the multi-day battery life means that my charger never leaves my house. I spend a good time of traveling uh, for work, so when I get that five minute break, I'm always looking to get something off of my to-do list. And so between the instant on capabilities and ubiquitous connectivity, I'm productive as soon as I open my device. Which means for those quick tasks that I used to turn to my phone, I'm now doing them on my PC. These devices and the experiences that come with them are just the beginning. We continue to invest in both hardware and software enhancements to move the ecosystem forward. And so as many of you saw yesterday, Lenovo is leading the charge on the next wave of Qualcomm powered PCs with the announcement of the Lenovo Yoga C630 powered by the Snapdragon 850 chipset. Let's take a look. Lean and light and crafted from premium aluminum, the Yoga C630 offers LTE connectivity at up to 25 hours of battery life. Combined with the optional digital pen, the Yoga C630 is designed for wherever the day takes you. Even when you're away uh, from Wi-Fi, LTE connectivity is built in to keep you productive whether commuting from home, at the coffee shop, or on your way to the next meeting. And with integrated LTE connectivity, it frees users from reliance on unsecure public Wi-Fi networks or the hassle of smartphone hotspots. Engineered to write quietly, the innovative fanless design stays cool under pressure, and an integrated fingerprint sensor means you can sign on in seconds to get to work quickly or enjoy that movie. When we think about connected computing, there are several commitments that we are making. We've already brought great devices to market with our partners, and we will continue to bring more innovative connected PCs in the future. But as I've said, connected computing is about marrying great devices with software, experience, software experiences that ensure users are always connected to the things that are important to them. We want to make it as easy as possible for our customers to get connected when they purchase one of these beautiful devices. Which is why we are committed to making the activation process as seamless as possible with our mobile plans application. Whether you're at home or on the road, you can add a device to your current smartphone plan or purchase data on demand, even while traveling abroad. For our enterprise customers, we are continuing with our commitment to bring an easy and intuitive enterprise eSIM solution to market. And as we saw uh, earlier, we continue to invest in creating seamless cross-platform and cross-device experiences, just like what you saw with OneDrive and Photos, as well as the PC and the phone. 
It's these types of experiences that make us believe connected computing is the backbone for a successful modern workplace, where productivity can happen anywhere and it's everywhere. In closing, we're excited about the potential of this multi-sense, multi-device world. As we continue to invest in modern devices and experiences, we believe it will enhance an incredibly rich portfolio, delighting customers today and future-proofing for tomorrow. And so with that, I'd like to welcome my colleague Thomas to the stage to share with you how we collectively bring the intelligent edge to market. Thank you. Please welcome General Manager of Consumer and Device Sales, Microsoft, Tomas Kovalik. Thank you, Aaron, and good afternoon, everyone. So, to start with, I'd like to welcome you to, to IFA and to our showcase, which is one of the most important that we have in this year. I'm an IFA fan for many reasons. It inspires me when I see a glimpse of the future on the show floor next door, in our meetings with the ecosystem partners, or here at the keynote. But IFA has also always been very mindful about the here and now, and how technology impacts our lives today. As Nick and Aaron mentioned, technology and software evolve at a rapid pace. We need to make sure that the way how we are selling and using technology keeps track. We want that the way how we are bringing technology to market is reducing complexity, is making it easier for us in our end users' lives. I would like to highlight three trends that we are observing that we need to consider when we are bringing intelligent edge devices to market. We were all witnessing the rise of the subscription economy just today. When you see the entertainment industry with Netflix and Spotify that have been now used synonymously with the word subscription, or software like antivirus and Office 365, or in the gaming section with the Xbox Game Pass that offers a broad variety of games for a low monthly price. What happened that it reached a tipping point now? What happened that we've broken through with the subscription economy? It was the combination of the infinite choice and the demand for an easy consumption at a low and affordable price. So it was a combination of content and compute, and it was an, like, an easy way to use it. So I want it simple, I want it transparent, and I want to have it my way and not the one fits all way. And the future-proof insurance needs to wrap it all, right? Because when I leave the retail store and technology evolves at this rapid pace, I don't want to be outdated as soon as I leave the store. I want to be future-proof. And these trends are now ultimately landing in the devices area. We are now about to reach a tipping point in how we are bringing devices to market. IDC projects that this year, 30% of the PC devices being sold in the commercial channel will be sold on the back of a device as a service sales motion. And we are seeing this trend expanding into, into the consumer channel as well. Take the always connected PC example that Aaron mentioned, where retailers are now bundling PCs with data plans and Office 365. But device as a service is much more than just a PC lease or a device subsidy. It combines the hardware and services like security, cloud, and device management. It reduces complexity by bringing the devices and services closer together. And it will add agility, so it will give access to new technology much faster. It will be much more cost efficient by bringing the total cost of ownership down. So it will free up time and resources. And this will be true for the traditional workspace, as well as for the entire range of new intelligent edge devices. Our partners are making the device as a service transformation real. And there are many more partners that fit on this slide. So allow me to, to pick just three of them. Look at Alsa, for example. How they are pairing premium hardware to target specific customers with their creative bundle and Adobe Creative Cloud solutions. So taking premium hardware and the software on one monthly fee, on one monthly plan, and making it easy to buy and consume. Or Synaxon, for example, with a strong focus on, sim on simplicity. It only takes you a few clicks to configure your own workplace for a low monthly installment. And the purchase experience helps you finding the right solutions based on your usage scenario. This 
is how we will move away from the one fits all workplace deployment to a highly customized setup to empower every individual to achieve more. And global device partners like Dell, Lenovo and HP, how they are leveraging their hardware experience to now offer end-to-end -end solutions including device deployment and device management. Imagine how much time we can free up in IT departments at large enterprises if we take device deployment and management off their list and how much time these IT departments now have to offer individual solutions to the workplaces the employees have. This is happening now. The sales transformation is here today, the devices are here today, and the intelligent edge will soon be embedded into our daily lives. For the first time here at IFA, we are showcasing intelligent edge IoT devices at our booth. See intelligent edge coffee makers that are reordering coffee beans before you run out of coffee. Or take smart heaters that can deliver temperature as a service into your living room. Or smart chargers and cables that, that charges your car in the most efficient way, from a power as well as battery life perspective. So to close, I would like to invite you all to experience these devices firsthand. Come with us on this transformational journey and take the dialogue with us. See, see how, it, how we can bring this to life together. And of course you will see the breadth of PC devices from education to gaming and the just recently launched Surface Go 2. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all and all the team and wish you a great rest of the show. Thank you very much.